the sure land of course we're all uh, you know feel that our land our water our soil our air is the most important thing that we have so um, Greg had okay, can we uh, just have a moment of I'll wait a moment until everybody okay thank you um, sorry that we were supposed to have a PowerPoint, but we don't have a computer, so we're going to do our best to communicate what we want to communicate to you. I, I'll probably refer to my, uh, I have the presentation on my phone, so I'll, I'll refer to a couple notes just to make sure that I don't leave out a couple important details that I wanted to include. So, uh, no, I'm going to, that'll remind me what to say. Okay. All right, what's that? Okay, well, All right. I'm with, we're with the community, uh, Columbus Community Bill of Rights, and Greg told you about fracking, why that's important to Ohio and Columbus, and now I'd like to talk about the problem. What we would like to do, can, can we have some, uh, I'm sorry, we're not getting any attention here. Yeah, I'm giving a presentation. If you could all, like, if you have to talk, please exit. All right, thank you. All right, appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so most of us think we live in America, and we say, well, shouldn't we be able to uh, decide what happens in our own backyards, in our own communities? You know, if we have something we don't want that's going to impact our health, shouldn't we have the ability to say no to it? Most of, I think everybody would probably agree that we, we should have that. So what it turns out is we don't for various reasons, and I want to go through some of those and how our Community Bill of Rights addresses those. So uh, one of the problems is there's federal laws that uh, were supposed to protect our environment. You know, the EPA was formed in 1970, so almost half a century. But look what's happened. Are things any better in our environment? I think most people would say that they are not, right? Oh, that just came on. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so that's one of the issues is that, you know, these laws aren't working. Okay, so another one of the uh, problems is that under the current structure of law, communities are actually prohibited from uh, banning unsustainable activities. So what are some of those unsustainable activities that communities have wanted to ban? Well, fracking, of course, is one. Dumping of hazardous waste, that's important to us. Uh, hog and factory, chicken factory farms. A lot of small farmers haven't wanted, wanted those in their community. Uh, ge uh, genetically modified seeds. Uh, pesticide spraying. Uh, big box stores. You know, uh, and uh, a corporate extraction of, of water for you know their, their profits. A lot of communities have wanted to ban those things and they think they should have a right to do that. Well, okay, let's get to the problem. Okay, get my finger. So there's federal and state laws that have actually permit, uh, have uh, uh, been the problem for the past hundred years. Uh, so they actually permit these things and we're looking at what can we do to fight this. So, uh, let's talk about, there's a box that activists are in that prevents us from uh, protecting our communities. Well, I'm going to draw on this box, so Greg, if you would hold this side up, and I'm going to draw it side by side so you can see the problem. This is called the Box of Allowable Local Self-Government. Okay, well the first part of this here, let me draw it here. Okay, are you? It's called Dylan's Law. Or Dylan's, uh, yeah, oh yeah. Dylan's Rule, more appropriately, and Preemption. Yeah. Okay. So this is one side of the box 
Dylan's rule and preemption, and I'm going to draw the sides of the box and explain what they are. Push up. Hey. Well, first of all, Dylan, he was a Iowa Supreme Court uh, justice way back in the 1800s. Um, but it even goes back before that. There was a case in Dartmouth in the early 1800s that basically granted uh, contractual equality with a uh, business corporation with the state, and municipal uh, corporations have a lower uh, uh, level, uh, so that they are, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they're elevated business corporations above municipalities. So that was the start of. Then Dylan, more importantly, ruled that uh, municipalities don't have any power that is not specifically granted to them from the state. So, the state is like the parent and municipalities are like the child. So that's one thing that's preventing democracy from happening here. Uh, this is happening, you know, not just in Ohio, all over America. And uh, so under this, this concept, that government is merely, you know, the local government is just merely an administrative agent of the state or federal government, and we elect these local officials, but when it comes to some of these important issues, they're, they're really, they can't do anything about it. So, uh, and another thing about state preemption. In 2004, Ohio House Bill um, 278, it gave Ohio Department of Natural Resources, ODNR, uh, exclusive authority uh, for uh, oil and gas permitting location and regulation. So that means they said no, uh, local municipalities can't have a say in this. The state decides this. So the federal law uh, uh, preempts the state, the state preempts the local, so it sounds pretty undemocratic system. All right. So the second part of the box is called the rights of property. So let me draw that. Okay. So, uh, Greg, if you would hold this up, I hope you can see it. If not, I'll just explain. It's called the rights of property. Now. Uh, what does that mean and how does that restrict us here? So, first of all, for much of the uh, history of this country, human labor and nature have been seen as uh, property under the law. And so that, that means they don't have a lot of rights because they're considered property. Women and slaves were considered property. Uh, and the evaluating of, of, of property over the rights of people and communities nullifies local self-government. So, yeah, this is in the con Constitution as well. Uh, at, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that our Constitution also, uh, you know, makes that uh, property more important than, than people in a lot of ways. So, the uh, third part of the uh, box, uh, if you hold that down and let me write it, is corporate privileges. Yeah, corporate privileges. Now, I don't want to call them rights because we don't believe that corporations have rights. They are have been granted privileges. Well, what are some of the privileges? You've all heard of like Citizens United, but it started way back. 1819, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, recognized constitutional rights for corporations in a Dartmouth case, which is called the Contracts Clause, which, which they used to their advantage. Then in 1886, that's when corporations were declared persons. That long ago, 130 years ago, by the, uh, and so they have the rights of the 14th Amendment. Then, in 2010, with the Citizens United decision, that uh, corporations have First Amendment rights, which is free speech, and of course we know they can spend money at, at will because of that. And corporations are also protected by the Fifth Amendment, and so, what that does is says that all communities, first of all, have to allow uh, legal uses. And if the corporations are granted a permit to extract resources from a community, then 
and a community tries to prohibit that, the corporations can sue uh, the community uh, claiming that their property has been taken without due compensation. So this is uh, one of the issues, one, uh, uh, part of the box. And then there's one other part of the box here, which is the regulatory fallacy. Let me just draw that and say a couple words. So the regulatory fallacy, basically, we tend to say, well, what, what do we need? We need more regulations. Okay, well, <laughs> what are those regulations really doing? Well, the regulations do two things. First of all, uh, regulatory agencies issue permits and that allow the harm in your community. So the state ODNR issues permits to the uh, different uh, businesses, corporations, to do that harm in your communities there, whether it's dumping a fracking waste or, or whatever. And it protects the corporations from liability. So it does two things, okay? Uh, secondly, who writes those regulations? Almost all, all of them are written by industry. And they're given to, you know, the, pe the officials, politicians, and all of that, because they don't uh, have knowledge about that. And of course, they're written to, for their benefit, you know? Now, what if a community doesn't want any harm and, and the permit is saying, well, we'll allow this amount of harm. Well, we should be able to say no to certain things and that's what we believe. In Ohio, also, many of ODNR's oil and gas uh, uh, division comes straight from industry. So, talk about the revolving door there. And we believe that people have an inalienable right to clean water, clean air, safe soil, and you can't regulate those. Those are absolute rights. Okay, and there's one more thing in here. So let me put it in the middle of the box and then I'll talk about that. So this is doubt. This is the doubt that we have that we can change things. You know, uh, we feel like, wow, it just seems like it's too hard a task. The laws are against us. The politicians are against us. Big money, everything else. Yes, all that's true, but how did we change things in this country if African Americans thought that everything was too, you know, there were just too many forces against them? Uh, would they have ever started? And now look what's happened, you know, with civil rights. It doesn't mean everything's perfect, but at least we've made progress. Look at uh, women's suffrage, you know, where they didn't have the vote, and so now, you know, they fought and they got it. You know, so laws are just laws. It doesn't mean they're just laws. So it's our job to challenge those and to uh, make them just. And uh, so, okay, well, thank you. I wanted to just point those out there. That keeps us boxed in. So uh, what do we need to do now to regain control of our communities? Well, first of all, we should stop protesting what we don't want and start saying what we do want. That's one thing. Secondly, we should let go of the notion that if we elect the right people, you know, things will get better. Well, the right people still have to work within the structure of law, which is the box. You know, that's the system. And we have to challenge the system, uh, otherwise uh, elect officials think that we're satisfied with it. So, I think, uh, you know, if we sit back and don't challenge it, what are they going to do? So we basically have three uh, choices. One is to do nothing and continue to let the harm happen and then it's passed on for future generations. Uh, two is um, to work within the regulatory framework, but we see that you're, you might get a hearing, but a lot of officials will say, well, they've been granted the permit, so my hands are tied. So that doesn't help us. So the third thing is to think outside the box and to act on the knowledge that we have inalienable rights to clean water, uh, well, inalienable rights for local self-government, first of all. And so that is the most important thing, especially when these things concern our health. Well, what do we, uh, what is part of the solution also is because of that, we're gonna, we adopt new laws that are called at the level of defining law. They transcend the regulatory framework. And then, uh, 
This changes the dialogue in the judiciary system. And what it does is it addresses our inalienable rights that are written in our Constitution and the Ohio Constitution. Let me just read one small part of the Ohio Constitution, which a lot of people know. It says, all men are born uh, equally free and independent and have certain natural, inherent, and unalienable rights, among which are the enjoyment of uh, defending life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, protecting property, pursuing and obtaining happiness and safety, okay? And then it also goes on to say that um, uh, that, uh, all the, that the people have at all times a complete power to alter, reform, or abolish their government whenever they deem necessary. So this means we have the power of changing the system and we have to exercise that power. Now, uh, so what is, how, uh, we're, the, we're, we're with the community, you know, Columbus Community Bill of Rights, but there's uh, community bill of rights all over this country that are happening right now that have been passed. Well, it started with a group of uh, uh, lawyers and other concerned people in Pennsylvania. I won't go through the whole history, but the organization is called CELDEF, which is Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund. See, we need people like that who are fighting the good fight because they understand the laws. They looked at the box we live in and they said, we've got to find a way out of this box. And so they are drafting these community bills of rights, which we are part of that. And uh, the organization is CELDF, -E Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund.org. So uh, now, what do these laws do? Well, first of all, they establish community bill, bills of rights to say that we have the right to local self-government and the right to a healthy environment and, and safe water, air, soil, and so forth. They prohibit, for Columbus, we're prohibiting corporate fracking and other activities. We are, uh, and dumping and everything associated with it. We are redefining corporate rights and powers that, uh, of corporations that violate our laws and invalidating state permits. We put it right into the laws there. Now, a uh, couple other things that, okay, what's in our uh, Community Bill of Rights? You can come and, uh, yeah, you can come to our booth, which is right near the jazz tent, or just three up from the jazz uh, stage there, and uh, get more information about that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we've got somebody here, and also Greg and I have petitions uh, let me say a few more, and then I'll say about how you can help. All right, just a few more things. Well, if you want to read the whole thing, it's on our website, which is columbusbillofrights.org, or also on our petition, or also at our booth. But basically, let me just highlight what's there. First of all, we state our inalienable rights to clean potable water, uh, clean air, safe soil, right for peaceful enjoyment of home, right to be free from toxic trespass, now here's something that people sometimes don't think about, the right of natural communities. That natural communities have a right to evolve and be there, not just human beings, you know, and uh, not to be just taken advantage of. Uh, the right to a sustainable energy future. Then it goes on to say, how are we gonna secure those rights? And um, what are we gonna say is unlawful about the corporate activities that we're going to uh, ban uh, we're not going to, uh, you know, uh, recognize the permit. We're going to say it's uh, it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not in effect. And we have ways to enforce it if things happen. And Greg mentioned those 13 injection wells. Our uh, community bill of rights. If one of those leaks in our watershed and pollutes our water, which is very likely to happen at some point, we would have the right to sue. And we currently don't have that right there and that's spelled out in our uh, community bill of rights there. So I just want to end with just a, to say that this is a movement, it's called the Community Rights Movement. It's happening all over Ohio. We are soon going to have a Franklin County Bill of Rights up which is going to have a, char a charter in it. Ours right now is a city ordinance and uh, so we need 9,000 valid signatures. So we need everybody's help with that. Um, and soon the Franklin County one, we don't have a time limit for that. For the city one, they, 
they restricted us. We only have a year to get the, the signatures there. Uh, what's that? Yeah, and we need, yeah, so uh, let me say, uh, that, well, I'll just say where else in Ohio, it's happening, of course, in Colorado, Pennsylvania, there's community rights, things have happened, but uh, they're trying to get one and for Athens County. Actually, they did pass one, and then the Supreme Court ruled that they didn't have enough spelled in their charter, so they now are redoing that. Uh, in Medina, right, uh, Portage, uh, Youngstown, uh, and, and various other communities, just in Ohio, let alone all over. So how can you help? Well, first of all, sign our petition. If, if any of you right now are Columbus, you vote for Columbus, you're a Columbus resident, because sometimes we ask people, we say, are you Columbus, but they're actually in Westerville, and they sign our petition. Unfortunately, those aren't valid for this one, but they will be for the Franklin County. So we have uh, the uh, Columbus right now. If you vote for the Columbus mayor or city council, then you can sign our petition. And what else can you do? Well, uh, you can help us collect signatures. We need people to help us petition. Uh, just If you can volunteer any amount of time, please contact us. Uh, you can visit our website, which is communitybillofrights.org. You can visit columbusbillofrights.org. You can visit, uh, uh, you can donate to our campaign. We do need money because we're, uh, you know, we're not sponsored by any business or anything. We're just a group of concerned citizens and we have to print postcards and various other things. And uh, you can join us. So, yeah. And if any of you, again, haven't signed our petition and you are Columbus residents, please come and see us before you uh, go. And uh, we would gratefully take your signature. Are there any questions that anybody has for us? Well, one more thing, Greg. Uh, anybody familiar with Broadview Heights, Ohio? Okay, Broadview Heights was, it's a bedroom community of Cleveland. There's 14,000 people, it's a suburb of Cleveland. And between, I think it was 2006 and 2012, I think it was that six year period, there were 70 wells dug in, within the community Broadview Heights. They couldn't control it. It was out of control. A lot of everybody signed the leases. There were mineral oil leases things that were going to be great. But I was up there about a month and a half ago and talking to some of the people that you know, have these legacy wells that are now five or six years old. They get like forty dollars a month. Some of them some of them don't get any the royalties on these things. So they you know there was really you know they got all these wells, they got wells next to the playgrounds. There was a kiddies playground area that had a gas well about from here to that speaker from the playground. And so it's just it's nuts. It's really nuts. The schools are all over the place. But they, they passed their community bill of rights in 2012. They have had that, not had one well since 2012 for three years. Now the Ohio, the county court turned their bill of rights down this year, which basically means the drillers can come back in and they, they have not have any teeth. And that's the fight that we're, we're in. It's a movement. This is a fight. So people of communities taking our rights back. And it's going to be the fight. It's, it's not something that's going to happen right away. But that's what we're doing. And we're doing this in Columbus because we want to make sure right here in Columbus it doesn't happen in the state house right here in Columbus. But what, one other thing that happened in Broadview Heights that was, that was good was that last year they couldn't spray brine on the road because of the community bill of rights. So county by county they allow brine spray with this way you have to brine. The dust control and ice control in the Broadview Heights, they can't do that. Yeah, question? Was the deregulation of the... Uh, Let me give you this speech so everybody can hear. Was the deregulation of the injection industry, isn't it possible they could be putting all kinds of stuff from all kinds of different industries in and do the club go fracking? Right here. Yeah. You talk about the, the, the oil and gas industry or other industries? The regulation of the wells, you're saying? Of the, of the injection well. Injection well. Couldn't they just dump anything in there from the Yeah, there, there's no testing. Yeah. They say they test it, but they don't. They, they, they take stuff in from Marcellus, which is the, the worst. And you know, Marcellus has been shown to be 3,000 times the EPA drinking water limit and brine and so forth. But they My don't question test it. Could it be from. Uh, uh, Metal plating, could be from photography waste. Well, there, yeah, there's different, it could be. That's the problem with class two injection wells. These these wells were not designed 
this type of hazardous waste. This is more hazardous waste than the, what they were designed for. If they're, I think it's the class ones, I don't know which way it goes, but the other wells, or they're supposed to be using for this type of waste, but because oil and gas gets exemptions from everything, and all the regulatory agencies, OSHA, uh, EPA, everybody, you know, and so they can do whatever they want. You know, Ohio has our own state injection well program. The EPA turned it over to states and wanted to turn it over to themselves years ago, and so now we're a, we're a renegade state with this thing. It's totally, it's a deregulated, like you try to say, it. it's a deregulated injection well industry. And now, over the last two, two or three years, the whole, all, now they're putting all these other plants in, all these open pits now for waste, and processing facilities for waste. ODNR, two years ago, was supposed to have this all regulated, have all the infrastructure of the regulation of how they're supposed to build and engineer these things. There's nothing. They're doing it now, permitting them all with no, no regulation as to how they're supposed to do it. It's all best practice. That's what they said. Use best practice. That's what we got. Any other, any other questions? Didn't, didn't the Ohio Supreme Court rule against the community rights? Didn't they say that the state law supersedes local law recently? Well, and how does that affect what you're trying to do? Well, I mean, that's in the structure of law, but have they had a ruling recently about that local communities are, yeah. One thing I know, one, the only thing that the Supreme Court did with oil and gas was, uh, Monroe Falls, Monroe Falls. That was 2014, a couple of years ago, and the Monroe Falls was a zoning issue. And Monroe Falls always charges money fees for people to go for, for permits for these types of wells. And because since House Bill 278, and they have state control now, the state of Ohio decided they don't have to pay their local zoning fees anymore because it's at the state level. That's that they wanted to keep them out. They had this well that was within a couple hundred feet of the school. They wanted to stop that. So that's what they were doing. I think that's part of what they were doing. But the Supreme Court did a split decision. Uh, it was four to three or whatever. It, it, Justice O'Neill, I think, he just basically said that, you know, this is ridiculous. This is, you know, you got the hens in the, in the state house, you know, running this thing. And this is what you get. This is basically what he said out of that decision. And so zoning. Uh, there's still some possibilities. You might be able to do some kind of zoning. Pretty toothless. They have control over everything. Yeah, one thing zoning does, it still allows the harm in your community. It just says, oh, let's sacrifice this area over here. So that's not a solution. But to, to address your question, too, about, okay, well, the state says, okay, it's like I mentioned, preempt local communities. Well, this is why we're passing these things and we're basing it on something more fundamental, our inalienable rights that we are gonna argue when it gets to courts, uh, and eventually more communities are doing this, that not only are we're gonna make sure our elected officials support us, but the judges are gonna have to listen to us too and have to see our argument is, hey, how can you argue with inalienable rights? You're born with these rights. These are fundamental rights that we have, these supersede the right to property, the right to profit, and all of that. And so eventually these laws have to be overturned and uh, we'll eventually be calling for uh, a federal, uh, you know, uh, uh, amendment or whatever it takes to say that local communities do have the right for, for local self-government, especially on these issues that affect their health and safety. You know, this is democracy we're supposed to have, but we see the problem is really a democracy problem, not a fracking problem. So if we solve the democracy problem, then local communities can say no to fracking, no to big farm, uh, box farms, no to you know lots of unsustainable activities there. But yeah, it's it's going to be a it's going to be fight there. The Broadview Heights decision, though, uh, back in I think it was March. Uh, what happened? We got 88 counties in Ohio, and they made these uh, community bills of rights. Basically, can't use them in Cuyahoga County now. So we've got 87 counties to go over. So we want to keep doing this county by county. So we're not going to go to the Supreme Court. We don't want to, Colorado, I think it was, they banned bans statewide. We don't want to do this statewide. We want to go county by county. But what happened in Broadview Heights, they had three judges, like you talk about getting you in front of the courts and in front of these judges. One of the judges lived in a community right next to Broadview Heights. So he was very sympathetic to this. 
So I don't remember what the conversation was. This is exactly what the conversation in the courtroom. We don't have a voice in the courtroom through the state regulatory system. None. Absolutely none. We're going around the state right now, the pressure stations and pipelines, the EPA hearings, and all we're doing is to get 150, 200 people that are voicing their concerns, and what we're doing is the forum for the people to organize. That's what these EPA hearings are. The EPA isn't doing a thing about it. And so this gets us into the courtroom so we can start having a voice, get that voice in the courtroom in front of the judge. Any other uh, questions? Anybody? Well, thank you, and please, uh, you know, uh, sign if you haven't. Sign. Uh, any, uh, did you have a question? Yeah. Comment. Are you Josh Fox? Yes. Josh Fox. Josh Fox. Uh, Looking at getting to a direct to Gaslight. Gaslight Two. Uh, this Monday night on HBO, they're having a nationwide uh, house party event. They'll be on a new film, uh, Learn to Love. Better live. Yeah. Now, yeah, it's a long title. It's. Um, um, what is it? Loving, learning to love the world, or yeah. let go of the world and love all things that climate can't change. There you go. It's a super long title, but, but it's a good I highly film. recommend that you can sign up on a website for them and uh, get more involved with fracking if you stay from the line. Okay. Thank you. Well, if, one other thing before we leave, I want to make sure I. We're, we're, if Studio 35, everybody know what yeah. Studio 35 is in Clintonville? Got it. It's a world premiere. Ohio is doing this. Uh, yeah. Love this in Toledo. Are happy premiering this film. It's a full-length documentary now called We the People 2.0. South Def is you know, kind of presenting it, but it's by Tree Media, and they've got a couple other people over there doing this. But it's about We the People 2.0, Second American Revolution. And it's really about community rights and about the movement that's going on and why we're doing this. What the struggle is? Why we have to struggle? Most people. I haven't figured it out yet. Democracy is, is you know, on the rails in this country. It really is. So it's really, I think of it as the numbers game. We've got money numbers, and until the people numbers you know, outnumber the money numbers, it's just going to continue. All right. Oh, yes. J July 19th at 6.30, 6.45. 6 30 would probably be good to be there a little bit early there. It's a studio 35, and it's free. And we the people 2.0. This is about real, like reclaiming our democracy, which we don't have. Thank you.